What is up, everybody? It's Mike here with CST. It's just me today, so I'll give you all my quick breakdown of UFC Vegas 93. We're going to start it right off with the prelim opener, Melquise Costa versus Shailan Nerdenbeki. Melquise Costa is looking at minus 198 favorite, Shailan Nerdenbeki, plus 164 underdog. This one's a little nerve-wracking because Nerdenbeke has power. Their common opponent in their last fight was Steve Garcia. He nuked them both. Um, I do think Mel Costa has very good striking. I trust his striking. I also, I also think he has good jiu-jitsu. So if he has to do with the wrestling of Nerdenbeke, I think he'll be able to either get back up or find a submission of his own. So I'll take Mel Quizio Costa this week, uh, minus 198. We'll move on to the next fight, which is Josephine Knutson versus Julia Palastri. And Julia Palastri is a pretty solid fighter. Uh, I just trust in Josephine Knutson's skill set. I think she's a very talented fighter, and I think she has a lot of potential in the division. So not opponent-based, solely on Knutson-based. Um, I trust in her to get it done this week. She's sitting at a minus 192 favorite with Julia Palastri at a plus 160 right now. So two to one odds, but I think it's worth it. She's a pretty good fighter. Uh, most likely gets it done on the cards. She's not really a finisher either, but she's a great point fighter, wrestling, stand up. Um, she's solid. And then next we got Jekka Saragi versus Weston Wilson. And uh, this one's a real tough one to pick. Just kidding. This is going to be a, an unfortunate end to Weston Wilson's UFC run, most likely. Um, Wonder Boy's boy. You know, he stepped up to the plate against some killers so far, Gene Silva and Joe Anderson Brito, and he's gotten smoked by them both. Cheka Sirgi, another power puncher. Um, so probably going to go one of two ways. Weston Wilson gets that rolling knee bar, gets the submission win, baby. Let's go. Weston Wilson, one and two in the UFC. He's making his title run. Or he gets knocked out in the first round. And I'm leaning probably the second one. Um, you know, Jack Sergey has some power. He's pretty solid. He's sitting at a minus 355 favorite to Weston Wilson at plus 280. So we're going to go Jack Sergey by knockout. And then we'll move on to the next fight. We got Carly Judice and Gabriela Fernandez. Judice is sitting at a plus 130 underdog and Carly and Gabriel, Gabriel Fernandez at a minus 150 favorite. This fight, you know what? I'm just going to say F it and go with Carly Judis. She's 3-1. and one. She's an underdog. She's pretty solid. She had that split decision loss over Ernesta Karetskate on Dana White Contender Series. It was a banger of a fight. And uh, I'm just going to say F it and go with her. Uh, I think this is a very close fight. Um, but I'm going to go with the younger girl. She has four fights um, as a professional, but I'm just rocking with the underdog this week. I have a feeling about it. Be careful if you're following something like that, because I'm just, this is just a gut feeling. I didn't do too much research into this uh, fight, but I do like Carly Judy, so I think she's decent. And the other girl doesn't, um, doesn't, I don't want to diss her, but I'm, oh, yeah, I'm rocking with Judy this week. Next fight, we got Josh Quinlan versus Adam Fugit. This is a close money fight. Josh Quinlan sitting at minus 120. Adam Fugit at plus 105. And this one actually is a tough one. This one actually is a tough one for me to pick because there are things about both of these guys that I like. Josh Quinlan is a warrior. He's not the type to give up. You know, you see it in his last fight against Danny Barlow. He was getting smoked in the third round, and he just kept trying. His corner told him, "You need a finish," and he went out there and he gave it his uh, he gave it his all. He tried, and he got smoked, but he got dropped. Run forward, dropped. Run forward, dropped. Referee finally steps in, but he didn't want to uh, let that last main event go. This is crazy as hell. Um, yeah, so this one's tough though, because I, I want to go with Josh Quinlan. Shoot, I've. I've been high on Josh Quinlan in the past, and it's burnt me against Trey Waters. I was like, oh, yeah, Josh Quinlan by knockout. Let's go. And uh, that did not work out. And I've already bet against Adam Fuga in the past, and it didn't work out for me. So I don't know what to do here. I think a solid play would be fight does not go the distance or under 2.5. I think someone's going to get knocked out. Right now, I'm leaning Adam Fugit. 
but at the same time, there's things I like about Adam Fuga, and this is a really hard fight for me to pick. Um, you know, I don't even know. The money's close on both fighters. This one's tough. I don't know what to do in this fight. But if I had a lean, if I had a lean, I'm going to go with uh, Josh Quinlan just because of I have had preference to him in the past. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes the other way. So either way, no matter what side you're betting on, there's value. One, minus 120 for Quinlan, plus 105 for Fugit. It's a, this is a tough one to call, so be careful. Next fight on the card, we got Jimmy Flick. Jimmy the Brick Flick versus Nate Maness. You know, this one's pretty cut and dry. Nate Maness is a better fighter. But at the same time, uh, Jimmy Jimmy Flick, he could pull out that Vaughn Flick. He could pull out that RNC. He could pull out something. You know, he could be getting completely worked and somehow get a sub. But I think Nate Maness is good enough that he's not going to allow that to happen. He's a better striker. I think he's better. He's better everywhere. You know, Flick does have that crazy savant jujitsu, but um, I don't think Maness is going to make a mistake to allow himself to get to that position. Plain and simple, uh, Maness is minus 485. Jimmy Flick is plus 370. So if you're looking to take a huge dog shot, this probably is not the one. Unless you're betting Jimmy Flick by subs, I think that's the only possible chance he has. Next fight, we got Tagir Ulenbekov. Versus Josh Van. Tagir Ulenbekov sits at a minus 230. Josh Van at plus 190. A lot of people are on Josh Van this week. And I'm trying to figure out a way for me to be on him as well. Because I think, you know, he could just be him. This this is the opportunity where it's like, okay, is he him or not? I mean, losing it to Tagir Ulenbekov doesn't mean you're not him. He's young. He's like 23. He's uh, had a few fights in the UFC. He's looked good so far, but he has areas where he can improve um, just like anybody else. But I'm, so, I'm talking about this could be the moment. Is it, is he him? Josh Van goes out there, stuffs the wrestling with ease. Ba 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 ba. Body shot, body shot, head. No diddy. You know, I'm, uh, I'm excited for this one because I think that Josh Van has a decent chance, you know, and I'd be, you know, I'd be tripping if I, Say Josh Van's definitely gonna win. He's gonna smoke him, but you know, plus one ninety is almost a two to one underdog, and that line might get a little bit better as well. So if I see him pop up over plus two hundred, I might sprinkle Josh Van. Um, but that's a risky pick because Tagir Ulenbekov is good. He's been coming into his own. Um, you know, he's he's pretty relentless with his pressure. Josh Van optimally will want to keep it standing um, and strike with Tagir. But I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. So leaning to Gear and back off minus two thirty. But if the odds keep going up for Josh Van, I might take a dog shot on is he him or not. <laughs> Next fight on the card, we got Brady Heastan versus Garrett Armfield. Brady Heastan is sitting at a plus one fifty four underdog, and Garrett Armfield is sitting at a minus one eighty five favorite. This is another fight that I like. I, I like both of these guys. Brady Heastand is, he's tough. He's a good wrestler. He never quits. He's tenacious, good cardio. Um, and Garrett Armfield is a dog. He has great striking. He, the one thing I'm seeing uh, in a potential matchup between the two is there's probably going to be a power and strength uh, disadvantage for Brady Heastand, although he's big and he's good at wrestling. Garrett Armfield just... I feel like he has power in his hands. I feel like he's strong when it comes to the wrestling, even though Brady Heastan may be the better wrestler. Um, I feel like Garrett Armfield is going to have a strength advantage. I don't know how to describe it, but the way I'm seeing it in his head is that Garrett Armfield might be able to strong arm him and, you know, implement his game plan, uh, do what he wants to do in that fight against Brady Heastan. I like Brady a lot, and I like seeing him as an underdog. Um, but... If I'm lean in any way, it's probably going to be Garrett Armfield. I don't know if he gets a finish or not. I know Brady Heastan's been dropped in the past multiple times. Um, Garrett Armfield, I don't know, man. Garrett, I'm leaning Garrett Armfield, but I want to say I'm rooting for Brady Heastan, but I'm a fan of both of the guys. I love Brady Heastan. Garrett Armfield's cool on Twitter. Um, so, you know, may the best man win that one. Uh, if I had a lean, it's Garrett Armfield, maybe by knockout. But I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to the judges' scorecards. And then we'll move on to the main card. Let me get another sip, my delicious beverage. 
Asu Amabayev versus Jose Johnson. Asu Amabayev sits at minus 575. Jose Johnson plus 425. Jose Johnson is six feet tall and he's making a cut to fly weight for his first time in his career, I believe. He's been a bantam weight. Um, that's cause for concern. But, you know, say we see Jose Johnson on the scales look crazy good. He he doesn't look drained. He somehow, you know, stick figure, looks strong, looks ready to go. And then who knows, maybe he puts on 25 pounds the next the next day. Um, excuse me. Maybe he's a dog at flyweight. Who knows? He has those long limbs. He has power. You know, he has decent sub games. Um, so maybe, maybe he, you know, sinks in a little ninja choke on the uh on the shot from Asuam Vayev. But let's be real though. Also, I'm a vibe as a tenacious wrestler. If I had to give the most realistic outcome of this fight, it's probably going to be I'm a vibe, gets the fight to the ground and either finds his way to a ground and pound finish or a submission finish. But, you know, hey, if the odds are crazy enough, Jose Johnson by sub, Jose Johnson by knockout, who knows? We might do a little something right there, but it's probably a donation. So I would not necessarily advise that. Next fight, we got Douglas Silva DeAndrade. And Miles Johns. Miles Johns is a minus 130 favorite to Douglas at a plus 110 underdog. He's 38 years old, but he's a well rounded fighter. He's real good. I'm not super high on Miles Johns. Never have been. Um, don't know why. I was really pulling for Cody Gibson in their last fight and he he just wasn't able to get it done. But I've been I've been waiting on the uh on the on the Miles Johns to get checked. And he's you know, he's been checked in the past, but he's a solid, well rounded fighter. He's a decision guy. Miles Johns by decision could be decent, but I think the 38 year old might have something left in him. Just like uh what was the fight recently? It was the big uh the the Polish guy got beat up by man, it's escaping me right now. Um the guy who knocked out Michael Johnson, the Brazilian he whooped him in the second and third round. So we'll see if we can see something like that. Miles Johns has slowed down in the past. I wish I could remember those guys' names off the top of my head. It's unlike me to forget the names of uh, fighters. But I'm going to go with Douglas over DeAndrade here, plus one ten underdog. I think he might be able to mix it up on Miles Johns a little bit and keep the pressure high. Uh, we'll see what happens. Would not be surprised if Miles Johns finds his way to another decision victory, though. We'll move on to the next fight. We got Timmy Kuamba and Lucas Almeida. Lucas Almeida sitting at a plus 170 underdog to Timmy Kuamba at a minus 205 favorite. Timmy Kuamba looked real good in his debut, although it was a loss at lightweight, which is a class up from where he's fighting this weekend against Oki, Balaji Oki, I believe his name is. Um, he looked good in that fight. I was nervous for him because he looked he looked noticeably smaller. It was short notice. And he's real young. So I didn't want him to take too much damage, but he actually was really impressive. He had good striking, good wrestling. He fought he fought well. And Lucas Almeida is a, you know, he's a great striker. He's got knocked out in his last fight by Andre Feely. Before that, he got dominated by Pat Sabatini. I'm not saying Timmy Kwamba is anything like Pat Sabatini in terms of the wrestling, but I wouldn't be surprised if Timmy Kwamba, you know, floats his way to a victory here. Minus 205, though. The bookies are onto it, and I'm not sure. If I want to bet on two to one favorite Timmy Kwamba in his uh, featherweight debut at uh, in the UFC, he is naturally a featherweight though. He fights at featherweight, but Lucas Almeida is a good test. Uh, if he's not able to get him down, it could be a long night for him. Almeida is a good striker, but I'm going to lean Timmy Kwamba here minus two hundred five, maybe by decision, and you know he he could finish him too. Maybe I don't know, man. Timmy Kwamba impressive in his debut although it was a loss i'll go with timmy kwamba here and then next we got ikram aliskarov minus 1200 favorite against antonio tricoli plus 750 underdog this one's plain and simple um ikram aliskarov should get the finish here in the first round you know i don't see any other way for this fight to go unless tricoli's made some vast improvements and is ready to fight one of the scariest prospects at the middleweight division. I do not think that's going to happen. This fight is pretty much unbettable. I don't have the props yet, but I doubt they're going to be juicy at all. This fight's probably just going to be a quick, let's enjoy this for the two minutes that it's going on. And then we'll move on to the main event. Main event, we got Alex Perez versus Tatsuro Taida. 
And uh, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, Todd Sutter Tyra sitting at a minus 185 favorite with Alex Perez at a plus 154 underdog. And in this fight, I'm not going to lie, I'm going with the underdog, Alex Perez, baby. You know, Tatsuro Tyra, he's a, he's a good prospect. He's undefeated, obviously. He's real good. And he has great jujitsu. His striking is improving. He seems to have some power in his hands as well. But Alex Perez is fast, man. And I'm kind of, I'm rooting for the Alex Perez resurgence, man. You know, he's he's had a lot of fight cancellations, a lot of injuries. He hasn't fought very often in the last couple of years. But, you know, he's he's come back recently. He's fought two times in the last few months. Uh, two, well, he, he lost to Makayev, but it was a, you know, close decision uh, where Makayev was really, really implementing that wrestling game plan. And um, he has, coming off that Mateusz Nikolaou knockout, he looks really good in that fight. He didn't look bad in the Makayev fight either. And um, this is a pretty, pretty big step up for Tatsudo Taira in the, um, in terms of his competition. Originally, I don't, I still don't understand. I should have done more research on Tatsudo Tyra was supposed to fight Tagir Ulenbekov and Josh Van was fighting Alex Perez. Oh, no, no. It was Tatsudo Tyra versus Josh Van and Tagir Ulenbekov and Alex Perez. And they switched up the fights. Um, Josh Van kind of got the short end of the stick on that one. But, uh, you know, Tatsudo Tyra, you know, he's going to really get tested this weekend. This is another potential I'm him moment. He goes out there, beats uh, Alex Perez by submission, finishes the fight in his first main event slot. You know, that could be big for his career. Uh, that'll put him right up into title contention here soon. He'll be looking at a, you know, another high ranked opponent. If Tatsuro can get the win, I'm going to go with the underdog though. And I'm going to think that Alex Perez will be able to, you know, stick on the outside, get in, get his shots, get back out, keep moving and uh, potentially find a late finish or win this fight by decision on the cards. It could go either way, though. Uh, Tatsudo could get his uh, I'm him moment as well, win his main event, finish Alex Perez via submission. Um, I can see that as a reality as well, but I'm going to ride here with the underdog, Alex Perez. If I was going to think about lock of the week for this card, I'm looking at my notes down here. If I had a lock of the week on this card, that's hard to say, man. It is hard to say because there's a lot of chalky lines and then a lot of close lines where I'm relatively unsure about how these fights are going to play out. You know, like Miles Johns, close money against Deion Drage, Adam Fugit, close money against uh, Josh Quinlan. If I had a lock, shoot, I want to say, you know, they, they talk about don't bet on women's MMA, but we make money on women's MMA over here sometimes. So maybe if I had a lock, Josephine Knudsen, uh, just because it's decent odds, minus 192. I like Mel Costa as well at minus 198. Um, this card is pretty sus. Uh, we've been having some trouble uh, navigating these last couple cards, but uh, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. And I, I do think there's money to be made, especially when the fight parlays come out. Uh, my boy Nick likes the fighter to win and over 2.5, fighter to win and over 1.5, those little parlays. Of course, on FanDuel, we have... Uh, the method in round combos. So, you know, if you like Tatsudo Tyra this week, something like Tatsudo Tyra by submission in rounds three, four, or five, or in rounds one, two, or three, those little um, round combos juice up the odds for the method of victory a little bit. I would say always be careful when you're betting. Do your own research. Uh, enjoy the fights first and foremost. But if you're gambling, make sure to always do it responsibly. This is just a quick video for the week. I wanted to get something out and tell you about my leans, you know, Come follow us at CST. It's Combat Sports Today. We have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube channel where this video will be, obviously. Let your friends know. Give us a follow on these platforms. And uh, we'll be here to enjoy the fights and drop weekly content for you guys. I'm looking forward to the fights this weekend. Let's get after it, baby.